All right, applicant, you have a job to do and you know how to do it. That was the hard part, right? Or is the hard part getting yourself in the chair to get this party started? Is the challenge sustaining the energy and creativity it takes to backwards brainstorm and drill and snip and polish while also blocking out the noise of a process that is often fraught with pressure and high self-expectation? There are probably a hearty few out there who are immune to the stresses and blockages inherent in the application process, but those people are in the minority and may very well be modern evolutionary miracles. The rest of us face all the normal fears and hurdles that come along with having ambitious goals and aspirations for our futures. So if you have wrapped your brain around the mechanics of personal essay writing, but you're still feeling intimidated by the process, you're not alone. The college essay jitters have varied causes and can manifest themselves in a number of different ways. And we are here to help you squash those stresses and crash through those ugly impediments. In this chapter, we will show you how to manage your mindset during the essay writing process so you can perform at your very best. And of course, we will answer all of your burning writer's block and stress management related questions, including why, oh why, do I have writer's block? How can I get rid of it? What are some preventative measures I can take to combat this condition? And what do I do if I'm a chronic procrastinator? How can I maintain a positive mindset throughout the essay writing process? What if I want my essay to be perfect? When I think I'm done, how do I let my essay go? Let's start by discussing every student's worst nightmare. We know you know that feeling. Your mind is fuzzy. You're not really feeling like yourself. Every time you sit down in front of the computer, your head hurts and your fingers cramp. You try to hold on to your thoughts and they just fly away into the ether, never to be heard from again. You've come down with an icky case of writer's block, a condition that, when it has its grip on you, feels like it will never, ever let go. And this kind of virus is the last thing you need on your journey to college essay completion. The usual tonics and treatments are not good enough. This is an ailment that needs a specialist's attention. Luckily for you, we have earned our degrees in anti-frustrationism, finished our rounds in stuck-in-the-mud hospital, and are officially certified to treat even the most aggravated case of advanced writer's block. In fact, we have pioneered the science of writer's unblockology, experimenting with hundreds of students and ourselves to find the cure for this incredibly pervasive affliction. There are a variety of causes for writer's block, but among the most common are fear of failure. Nothing gets an otherwise competent writer to clam up like the worry that whatever he or she makes will not be good enough. This often launches students into the throes of what we like to call the procrastination doom loop, an endless cycle in which you convince yourself that the terror you feel with regard to writing your essay will be mitigated or even subside completely if you push the task off until tomorrow. Of course, when tomorrow arrives, your fear is only heightened because you have even less time than you had yesterday to backwards brainstorm, drill around and drill down, snip, flip, and fill, and triple edit. Lack of time equals more stress. Students can also feel blocked as a result of not having enough to do or having too much to do. Most likely, you will be working on your college essays over the summer or at the beginning of your senior year of high school, and both scenarios can breed college essay-related lethargy. Why sit down to free write when you can float on a unicorn-shaped pool toy in the sun? Who has time to find a topic when there are also a pile of math assignments and a history project to complete? Still, sticking with the essay writing process throughout both the busy and slow times in your schedule keeps your creative muscles warm and makes you less likely to run into a disheartening block along the way. You may also feel constantly distracted. How are you supposed to put together a coherent thought, forget a cohesive story, if you're constantly checking your Twitter feed for Kim Ye gossip or Facebook for pictures from that karaoke party? Wait, who's texting you now? And did your BFF for life just snap you a picture of a bunny that was adopted by a deer in the wild? Socialization is important, especially when it involves cute animal pics, and social media is an ingrained part of our lives and culture. Still, when it's time to get serious about writing your college essay, silence the noise and give yourself some room to develop ideas without the constant tug of alerts and notifications. Regardless of the origins of your writer's block, the treatment for this ailment can come in many forms. Lower your standards. Not like forever, just for the beginning of the process. You will raise your expectations of yourself later as you snip and flip and refine and polish. 
When you start, quality is not the issue. The issue is that you turn that scary blank page into one filled with ideas, even ones that you think are silly and or useless. Garbage writing days happen to the best of us, and just because you don't love the words you put down yesterday doesn't mean you've lost the magic or that you won't find that spark again today. Silence your inner critic. On a related note, we forbid you from labeling your ideas as garbage. In fact, you shouldn't be assessing the value of your ideas at all, especially if you're on the verge of feeling stuck. Shut down that critical voice in your head. Negativity does not breed creativity. We've said it before, and we'll say it again. Don't think, just write. Set up opportunities for small victories. So you can't polish off your entire essay today. Can you write a paragraph? How about one line? Take small steps. Chip away at the wall piece by piece. Remind yourself of how you dug in a little bit more yesterday than you did the day before. Every inch you type gets you closer to the final draft. Change the scenery. In chapter four, we talked about setting yourself up for writing success by choosing your ideal writing location. Sometimes you might feel like working from the comfort of your own room, while other days you might benefit from the hum of a coffee shop. When you're feeling uninspired, switch it up. Take your laptop to the park or do work in your Uncle Bob's barbershop if that feels right. A change of scenery introduces new stimuli, exposing you to different sights, sounds, and even smells that have the potential to shift your mood and knock new ideas loose. Take a break. Set your alarm and make sure you stand up once an hour to stretch your legs. And if you need a longer reprieve from your computer screen, watch a movie. Take your dog for a walk. Go to the kitchen and make yourself the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Do not just sit at your computer feeling frustrated. Carve out space for the things that brighten up your world, put you in a good mood, and make you feel like the most positive and competent version of yourself. Then carry that happy energy back with you to your draft. Also note that there is a fine line between not feeling like doing something, see procrastination doom loop, and giving your writing or brainstorming session a real try before deciding you need to walk away. If you feel like you've hit a wall or like the force just isn't with you, don't force it. Give yourself some space to clear your head so you can come back to your work fresher and with a little more Jedi writing power. Start over. It's not a fun thing to think about, but it happens. You spend hours slaving over your carefully planned essay, sculpting each word and carving away at every graph, and no matter what you add, no matter which sentences you snip and flip, you just aren't picking up what your essay is throwing down. You have tried every possible solution. Really, you have stepped away from the essay, come back to it, and still hated it as much as a snail hates salt. It's time to bring up a clean document and start anew. This is what is often called the global revision. Maybe it's time to think about your topic from a new perspective. Will a slightly altered timeline simplify and embolden your text? Can a grand metaphor make connections that weren't solidifying in your earlier draft? Try to think about one big cog in the wheel to move around or replace, and then give things another shot. As always, you can consult your free rights, but give yourself a chance to get some new thoughts down on the page as well. When it comes to conditions like writer's block, we are also big believers in preventative medicine. And there are a few things you can do to preempt that giant wall from sprouting up in front of you. Write every day. Start as soon as your junior year ends and the summer begins. Write or audio journal for 15 minutes a day. That's all you need. You can describe ordinary events or reflect upon random topics as you feel inspired. For example, why do you like strawberries but not strawberry-flavored things? And what if the color I see as blue and the color you see as blue are different, but we're both calling them blue? The point is to keep your brain warm and ready for that essay writing action when you decide the time is right to scan those common app questions and dig into the process of brainstorming backwards. Do a digital detox. We already mentioned the potentially harmful effects of social media on your essay writing focus, but believe it or not, the constant stimulation can actually cloud your brain. Shut down your devices for an hour or two each day. If you can't will yourself to do this, you may actually have bigger problems than writer's block. You might be a robot. Give your brain a rest and set aside some time to power down and get bored. 
Your brain will rebel against this state of general ennui and generate random thoughts and memories on its own if you create the space. Start early. We know. We've said it so many times we're borderline nagging you. But if at all possible, you've got to start this process early. Feeling a little stuck on August 15th is far less likely to throw you into a tailspin of panic and clog up the works than having a bad writing day on October 15th. A nice cushion of time will usually ease the pain of the process and ensure your heart rate remains normal. But what if it's too late to plan in advance? What if you're watching this video a week before the deadline? Do you feel the weight of a Mack truck on your shoulders? Are you worried that you can't do this? As reform procrastinators, we're here to tell you that you can. Is this the ideal situation to be in at this moment? Maybe not. Can you still slay the college essay dragon with some intensive training, a lot of concentration, and some good old-fashioned positive thinking? You bet. Here are a few helpful suggestions as you dig in. Don't beat yourself up. This is probably not the first time you've left something to the last minute, and it may not be the last. Your tendency to put things off doesn't make you a bad person or mean that you don't care. And we still love you. Make the best of the time you have and don't waste energy being upset about things you can't change. Cancel your plans. Did you think you were meeting up with your BFF for life to get ice cream later? We are super sad to say, no, you're not. For once, ice cream can wait. Don't make your situation worse by procrastinating more. By the way, we still believe wholeheartedly in the importance of break-taking, but ultimately your process has to be more about work than about rest, especially when you're down to the wire. Focus on the positives. Mainly, that it's all going to be over soon. In fact, procrastination is often used as a coping mechanism by perfectionists who care too much about the results of their endeavors, leaving them with only a small amount of time to obsess over the final product. See? Maybe you just wanted your essay to be perfect. Whatever the case, time is going to pass quickly and you're almost out of the weeds. Now, are we suggesting that you leave your essay until the last minute? No way. And a tendency to procrastinate is curable if you find the right incentives. At the very least, demise via procrastination can be limited if you simply take some time to really wrap your head around how long it will take for you to complete each element of the college essay writing process. Regardless of whether you decide to get down to business in the summer or the fall, three months in advance or three days in advance, we have some helpful tips to share for maintaining your sanity during the essay writing process. These tips may seem basic, but in the throes of college essay madness, they can be easy to forget. Hydrate. Don't underestimate the importance of H2O. Lack of proper hydration is often cited as the cause of midday fatigue and can lead to a decrease in alertness and concentration which sound like things you might really need to write a killer college essay. Eat. Hanger is real. Ask our close friends and relatives and they will tell you that you don't want to be around us when our tanks are running low. Whether you get a crippling case of the cranks or simply do a little late afternoon fade when your lunch wears off, make sure to keep snacks handy to feed your brain and keep you energized. Foods containing good fats like avocado and coconut pack a real high-energy punch, while protein-rich nuts are good for brain function and are highly snackable. Forget Sour Patch Kids. Eating healthy foods versus snacks crammed with sugar will ensure your energy lasts longer and doesn't leave you lingering in a treacherous sugar crash. Cry. Holding in your emotions is exhausting. If you feel like shedding some tears, we're here to hand you the tissues. Open the ducts and let out some salty water. Then blow your nose, wash your face, do something fun to pick up your mood, and try again. Move. Get a little old school. Go outside and feel the wind on your face while you stretch your legs. Or maybe you like doing push-ups in between paragraphs. Perhaps a dose of afternoon yoga will help stretch both your muscles and the borders of your creative mind. Exerting this kind of energy is an obvious stress reliever. Exercise also provides what we like to call accidental idea time. When you go for a run or a swim or a bike ride, your objective should be to think about nothing. A mind that is allowed to fully unwind is a mind whose best ideas are free to float to the surface. What if you have identified the cause of your writer's block and tried out the tips and tricks for wiping it out of your system but are still feeling stressed? 
If eating handfuls of peanuts, taking Miffy for a walk, and sweating it out haven't helped you clear the hurdles in your way, don't freak out. The stress you're feeling is totally normal, and you could benefit from a slightly more experimental stress-reducing strategy. So maybe, just maybe, try these. We have always been skeptics when it comes to activities that require you to talk to yourself, or that prevent you from talking to anyone else. But science actually backs up the power of some of the following exercises. Though they may seem a little woo-woo at first, the truth is, when you're desperate for relief from college essay anxiety, you may be willing to try something a little out there, especially if it has the potential to soothe your fried nerves. So if you find yourself hyperventilating over your opening line or simply want to recharge before you dive into your fourth why essay, give these exercises a try. You might be pleasantly surprised at the power a posture, a few words, or some silence can have on your mentality. Strike a power pose. According to Harvard social psychologist and famous TED talker Amy Cuddy, the way you carry yourself can have a powerful effect on your attitude. And, as we all know, bringing a can-do attitude with you into the college essay process is absolutely essential. Striking a high power pose for just two minutes can have an impact on the way you feel about yourself and your abilities, imbuing you with confidence and decreasing your cortisol levels. Take up some space with your body, one of the hallmarks of a high power pose. Might we suggest this popular stance, appropriately nicknamed the Wonder Woman? It just so happens one of our favorite superpower divas is also a master of this pose. And in case you fellas are thinking these magic positions only work for those with double X chromosomes, check out Olympian Usain Bolt right after he won the gold in Beijing. Or what about this guy? He looks pretty confident, no? Take a stand to change your body's chemistry for the better and make a proactive move to feel more powerful and relaxed in your own skin. Then carry that newfound positive energy back with you to the essay page. Recite daily affirmations. I have the smarts and the ability to get through this. Every one of my problems has a solution. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Saturday Night Live may have spent years poking fun at the concept of the daily affirmation, but just like with power posing, the impact of feeding yourself with positivity and optimism can have an astounding effect on your productivity levels. If you wake up feeling low or find yourself stuck at any point in the process, have a conversation with yourself. We swear this is a sign of health and not insanity. Pump yourself up. Say the things you know are true even if you don't feel them in the moment. Today, I am excited about everything. I will stop underestimating myself. I know I can trust my brain and write my guts out and trust my gut and write my brains out. The power of these words will work their way into your thoughts and fuel your work on the page. Are you sitting there thinking, this is actually crazy? No person in his or her right mind does this. Wrong. We're doing it right now. Right this second. We are looking at ourselves in the mirror, making Arnold Schwarzenegger-like poses, yelling, I'm as majestic as a lion and as sharp as a velociraptor's claw. And we must say, we're feeling very relaxed. Still, maybe you'd rather meditate. Start with the beginner's breathing exercise. All you need is your body and a quiet space. Set a timer for two minutes, sit down on the floor with crossed legs or in a chair if you lack the flexibility, and count each breath. This is harder than you think. Other thoughts will come into your mind, thoughts about why your second paragraph isn't working quite right and what you want to eat for dinner. Push those thoughts out of your mind and simply concentrate on taking long, slow breaths. When the timer rings, open your eyes and linger in a moment of calm. Now, go eat that hamburger. There is an old adage that says, writing is never done, it's just do. If you look hard enough, there will always be a detail you want to change, a description you can improve upon, a word that is almost but not quite right. The problem with trying to achieve perfection is that it is one of humankind's only unachievable dreams. It's the siren that calls unsuspecting writers out to sea to drown in the misery of endless revision. As Voltaire once said, perfect is the enemy of good. After much hard work, when you suspect you've collected a thoughtfully ordered set of words that you believe is your final draft, go through your final round of checks, give the essay one last read, and as Elsa, Queen of Arendelle, once famously said, let it go. 
One last note about the overall impact of college essay writing in the application process as a whole. There is no such thing as the perfect application. Remember, perfect doesn't exist. Even if you do submit impeccable test scores, an off-the-charts transcript, and a heartfelt masterpiece of an essay, there are still many elements involved in the application process that are simply out of your control. We know it's hard, but try to go with the flow. Trust us, you will end up where you belong. And approaching the application writing process with this measured outlook will allow you to manage your stress, put the process in perspective, and be ever more yourself on the page. That, as this very relaxed cat doing downward dog will tell you, is progress. <laughs>